Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Remy. I'm a postdoc at the University of Louvain in uh, Belgium, and I'm one of the BIDS maintainers. And today I'm here with uh, Patricia and Hank, who are going to tell us about the extension to the brain imaging data structure, so the BEP uh, on ASL. And so first, I'm just going to have them introduce themselves. So Patricia, you want to go first? Yes. Um, hi, I'm Patricia. I'm a PhD student, finalizing a PhD student at uh, Ghent University, and I'm mainly working on the variability of ASL. Hank? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want to say your favorite shampoo as well, or is that not part of My the, favorite the shampoo? I don't have a favorite shampoo. <laughs> the one that smells like roses. That's my favorite one. Uh, I never know which one. Uh, it's usually my girlfriend who buys the shampoo. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Henk Jan Mozart. So the, the, the second name uh, would be John in English. And I usually omit it for English speakers so that creates a lot of confusion. So that's why Hank is like uh, easy. Um, and I'm uh, actually started out as an MD, trying that during the medical studies, there were a lot of uh, in instances where I fled to music and uh, people really had to drag me through the internships. I like the studies a lot, but the practical internships were not uh, as interesting as uh, the research internship during my study. So that's why I, actually didn't pursue uh, radiology, which would be the logical uh, combination, but uh, to do a PhD, the PhD was on ASL um, reproducibility and also helping a lot of clinical studies in Amsterdam. Then I went for a short uh, postdoc in uh, Toronto on a multi-site study on ASL. So there were a lot of fat, different vendors, hospitals. So uh, you, yeah, you already get this problem with standardization and then uh, I uh, got back and I recently heard that I have a fixed position at the uh, MCMUC. So that's some very nice uh, with that. And um, Patricia and I am going to uh, continue uh, in the future a lot of times making very nice uh, ASL studies, right? That's true, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Great. Okay. So we're going to jump right into it. And if you could just tell me a little bit about sort of where the ASL BEP for bits came from and so its origin story in a, in a way and sort of uh, give us a, a very quick overview of the content of this. I think that's something for Hank Jan to talk about because he's the one who dragged me into this. I think uh, <laughs> he knows more about the start. Yeah. Well, um... Actually, um, another ASL group in Oxford uh, signed up first. I think the BEP was open for people to join. And then um, Michael Chappell uh, put his name on there and I asked him if I could help. And then, uh, yeah, somehow naturally, uh, he probably didn't have time. And uh, I did have some time. And if I didn't have time, I asked Patricia. So that was quite. Then he Quite found immediate me. in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, from there, you could probably take over, Patricia. You uh, you were, I think, uh, very good asking other people to help and, and uh, especially taking the whip when uh, oh, so stalking when people. <laughs> yeah. Stalking people, indeed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But mainly stalking people for the last few years to take a look at, uh, at what we have and to uh, add some stuff. We also had some meetings, some real life meetings um, uh, about this. So it was actually uh, quite an adventure <laughs> to get the uh, ASL bits uh, ready. Um, uh, yeah, we had, we had some meetings. Um, so uh, like I said, live, but also uh, virtual meetings, of course, now it's all virtual. So, uh, but at least we are there at the end done now <laughs> now it's done um for this part and uh, we're happy that it's finally released so yeah it seems yeah. That, ooh, okay it seems that there was a lot of cat herding involved in this and you had to just like make sure people could work together but you managed to pull it off so that's pretty awesome um so I actually have a couple of uh, more questions. One of them would be, so the whole sort of process of just coming up with this extension for bids, to, just from the Google Doc to the sort of the um, part where you move to GitHub and um, how, how was that? Well, how was the whole thing for you? Was this like painful and complicated or was it pretty seamless? And how did you find it? 
developed a little bit on the stage. Uh, some parts were very painful, <laughs> mainly because oh, the thing is with ASL, um, there are so many uh, approaches to acquire ASL, very, uh, a lot of new advanced techniques and many people wanted to add their part in there as well and then make it more complicated and then somebody else had another vision or another opinion. So it was often quite difficult to get uh, to actually streamline it and to get everybody on the same page and, and try to define, okay, this is what it's going to be. And then the advanced things are maybe for some some future extension or something. But now if we stay and we, we fix on the sequences that most people are using now. Um, so it's it's been, it's like I said, sometimes it's, it's been very difficult because you constantly had to contact somebody else extra and hear some opinions and then start discussions and a couple of months having the same discussion all over again. So. Um, but I have to say, I, we really had a lot of help for you guys as well, mainly with the, the conversion to GitHub, <laughs> which was new for me. Um, but yeah, some, some parts were, were hectic and difficult and other parts went quite smoothly, to be honest. So. I can add uh, yeah. probably that the, sorry, the, the GitHub stage is, uh, was easier, I believe, because you have a small group that's in, the, in this case that was working on it. And in the Google Docs stage, you have a lot of people. And the issue with ASL is that the community is, is mainly physicists who are creating new exotic acquisitions that can you know, acquire more perfusion parameters. So all their benefit was is to fit their new exotic sequences that nobody uses inside the standard. So, and, uh, and they were asking really you know, standard bits questions. So they, they had never read the first page, only the ASL part. And they asked for Patricia, why is this, uh, why is it SUB uh, uh, um, hyphen? So, well, that's been there for ages since the <laughs> beginning of bits. But I have to say it was as oh, well, like at a certain point, we had our a small core group with four people. And, and we also had an, a little bigger group who, who came to the weekly meetings. And that helped a lot to really advance, I think, because... We were just like, okay, we are the people who decide now. People ask questions, and in our little group, we decide we do this or that, and this is the reason we write it, write it down. And at that point, I think we really proceeded um, more fluently in general. So it would be a, a tip for future uh, groups who want to do an extension. Yeah, definitely. It seems that you, it seemed that there was a lot of like give and take you had to do, and you sort of managed to sort of like. Uh, just find a way to just make everyone agree, but it's it's difficult, especially when when you have to interact with people who are just haven't not necessarily seen the the rest of bids and then just want to add more things in it. It's uh it is a complicated thing to do. Yeah, yeah, I think you manage really well. Um, uh, I think it's a bit related to what you already said, but like, was there a thing and anything like an unanticipated difficulties in the whole process? Something like you really had no idea it would just happen that way. Um, anything that stands out doesn't have to be an answer. Like, I mean, if you were like, no, it was just like, yeah, it was just probably many, but I think we just try to forget it now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, I, what I found. We erase it from our memories. <laughs> I don't know, Patricia, if you were already with that call. It's one of the first calls uh, we had set up, um, you know, the, the draft. And then uh, there were a few important choices to be made. For example, uh, if you save in a nifty, do you store the original acquisition order or do you always separate certain parts of the sequence into different file names? Or um, you know, do you take how the vendor exports it? Uh, because each vendor does that slightly, some slightly differently. And these, you know, very uh, important decisions, it would be quiet if you. So you have all these ASL gurus at the, the call, <laughs> right? And I would ask this question. It would be quiet for half a minute. It's really awkward. And they said, okay. I, and then I just, you know, very bluntly asked, okay. Uh, and I would call a name, but what do you think of it? And then this person would say, well, I um, doesn't matter to you to just make a choice. And I, at the end of the call, I, I think I asked Jan Petter, uh, who said, I said, and a lot of work with this as well. So why, why or Patricia, I can remember that, why, why do they react like this? And he said, well, think of it. You are, you make, you know, you have your own lab and you have your own standard, which, is kind of fitting with this new exotic sequence that they are creating and testing. 
And then somebody is going to ask you to change all that to the worldwide standard pitch. And then they probably say, well, I don't care what you do. I mean, I have to put some work in changing it and anyway. I don't like that anyway, but I'm not going to say it out loud. So yeah, that was an eye opener that it you are forcing people to take on a new standard and it might be painful for them rather than nice. But in the end, it's nice. And we are all enthusiastic, but they might not be initially enthusiastic. Yeah, there's definitely a cost uh, that goes with like the switch from your current mode of functioning to like adopting bids but in the long term i think it's definitely it definitely pays off but it mm -hmm. definitely like that hurdle seems very like activation energy on this thing is like huge and people are like oh i don't want to go through there yeah yeah but yeah but actually okay that actually transitions to my last question is like okay where are we going next with this do you have anything like now that you have like a bep and you can just like organize your data with um, um bids uh asl it's like what's what's coming next well, what do we expect, Hank? I, I expect so many thanks from the whole community and a big festivity for us. I mean, no. <laughs> Next is yeah, yeah, probably. But this is your crown of your PhD, Patricia. So you probably <laughs> will expect holiday and uh, and indeed some champagne and, and post-COVID parties. I think um, the next step would be, my preference would be first the, to uh, extend the derivatives for to include ASL and then to extend with these new exotic uh well, these new exotic ones are becoming also more standard and then you know extending bits to include those but I think the derivatives are uh, important yeah the next logical step okay cool yeah. okay fantastic seems you have a plan ahead and a lot of more work after you've had some holidays to recover from all of that please <laughs> Okay, um, that will be it. So thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Hank. And to everyone else, bye-bye and see you later. Thanks. Ciao, ciao. Bye.